Hey guys, welcome to the 18th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the New Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the break and the continue keywords. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and a text box. And once you have those on your form, just double click on the button. And under your button, one click, have some sort of loop statement that prints out an integer into a text box. So, when we debug here, we should get numbers 0 through 9 in a text box. Yep, and that's nothing new. We've seen this before. So what we're going to be looking at first is the break keyword. And we talked about a little this a little bit in the uh, switch statement. And what a break does is it'll just break out of the current statement that it's in. For example, like if we were to type the break keyword right here, as soon as it got to the break, it would just break out of this for statement and it would go down here. So it wouldn't even be able to get to this line of code right here. And as you can see, it's saying Oh, let me get it. Yeah, unreachable code detected. It says. So, what we need to do is we need to create. We're going to create an if statement right here because we want it to be able to get to that line of code. So we're going to say if i equals oops, i equals two, then we want it to break out. So, what it's going to do is it's just going to run through here, print it, print out zero, then it's going to print out one. Then it's going to reach 2, and then it's going to check to see if i is equal to 2. And since it is, it'll just break out, and oops, it'll just break out, and it'll just jump down here. So it won't even get to this line of code when i equals 2, and it'll just be done. It won't even go to 3 or 4 or any of those. It'll just be done with a 4 statement. So in order to analyze that better, we're going to insert a breakpoint. And we've never done this before, but what a breakpoint does is it will allow you to go line by line um, through the code and show what it's doing and like um, what the compiler is doing with your code. So let me debug here and click button one. It'll just jump down here and this is where the compiler is at the moment. So when we click F11, it'll just step and it'll just go to the next part of the code that it's going to do. So now it created integer i and you can see right down here it has all of our variables and stuff. So i is equal to zero right here. Now when we click F11 again, it'll just step to the next line of code that we want it to do. And it's just going to check to see if i is less than 10. Since it is, it's going to go down here through the code, and it's going to check to see if i is equal to 2. And since it's not, it's just going to jump down to this line of code and print out i into the text box. When we click F11 again, it'll increment i by 1 and start all over. So I'm not going to explain it again, but now we go down here. And now we can see i is equal to 2 right there. So now when it gets to this if statement, it will go to this break statement. And when we click F11 again, it will jump down to here because it's breaking out of this for statement. Yep. So now it is printed out 0 and 1 under the text box because once it got to 2, it just broke out and skipped this line of code. So now we're just going to stop debugging here. All right. So that's pretty much it for the break keyword. Now we're going to be looking at the continue keyword. And unlike the break keyword, what the continue keyword does is it will just skip to the end of the for state, or just skip to the end of the loop that it's going to. So if we were to say if i equals 2 right here, so and we type the continue keyword, what it would do once it got to i equals 2, it would just skip this line of code right here, go down here, and just start at the top again, and then increment it by 1 say i equals 3 and then I'll just continue on. So it would just skip um, writing 2 into the text box. So let's uh, do a little breakpoint again and see what this does. So now I'm going to click this button, go down here, create i, check to see if i is less than 10, go into the for statement, check to see if i equals 2, and no it's not, I equals 0. So it'll write it into the text box, and then let's go again, increment i by 1, just do the whole process again. Now that i equals 2, it's going to check to see if i equals 2. And since it does, it's just going to continue through the statement. Hit the continue keyword, and then it's just going to jump down here. It's just going to skip the rest of the code that is inside of the for statement. So it's just going to skip that and go right back up to here. And then we'll just increment i by 1 again check again and then it'll just check to see if i equals 2 and no it doesn't it equals 3 and that, so it's just going to skip the continue and it's going to come down here and then it's going to print out so basically what the continue does is it just skips the rest of the code that is inside of the uh, loop statement 
So if there were like multiple lines of code down here, it would just skip them all and go right back to the top of the for statement. So we'll just uh, stop debugging right here and we'll just run it without this break statement. So when we click this button, we should get um, numbers zero through nine, but it won't, won't print out two because once it equals two, it'll just skip this line of code right here and go back up to the top. Yep, we got zero, one, three, four, and so on. So that's basically it for this tutorial. So see you guys.